All right, got a little unfinished business to discuss about this sharpening jig from Shopsmith. Now, one of the questions was, can it be used to sharpen bench chisels? And the answer is, kind of. I mean, what you do for bench chisels is you lay them against this surface right here, which is nice, straight, square, and you slide it up to the disc or you bring the disc closer. Let's start with our disc a bit closer. We'll lock it in place. Make sure everything's locked. And we would bring that up and kiss it to the disc. Now, here's my problem with this. That angle is a very blunt angle. It's not the angle that I would use with my chisels. Um, I've got kind of a sacrificial chisel that we can see here. This is a, an interesting little pocket chisel from Fast Cap. And even there, you can see it's got a pretty sharp angle. Um, if I come in at that angle, I'm, I'm really going to be blunting that tip quite a bit. Now, I could, I could tilt this to a different angle. But now you see the problem here is I'm now over the table and I've run out of chisel. I can't bring that forward. I can't bring it forward here either. I don't sharpen my bench chisels with this jig, but let's let's just see what happens. Let me lock that down at zero, cover the way tubes so we don't damage those in any way. And let's give this a try. Taking it all the way down to low. Oh. It's really hard to not push that out on the disc. But again, here we're actually grinding a whole new bevel onto that chisel. It's not the way I want to sharpen bench chisels. Another thing that I mentioned that we would talk about is how to sharpen shaper cutters. Um, if, again, let me, let me uh, back everything off and put you in a new position. And while I get this set up, let me say that Tom from Woodshop Nerdery did an excellent job explaining how to use this particular feature on the jig. But you can see here, if I swing this over, there's a little place here for us to insert our shaper arbor. And onto that, we would then add our cutter, the tongued washer. And then we would use a wrench to tighten this down tight against the jig. And we'll bring our jig back to 90 degrees. And then we're going to bring this up where we're going to just kiss the disc against that face. And you can see I can't have it positioned here because I'm already running into the radius on the back of that cutter. It's just the cutting edge that we're concerned about. So that's the position where I'd want to lock that. And I'm just wanting to kiss that surface. So I'm going to lock the quill out here for just a moment. And we're going to set that as our zero depth over here on the depth gauge. And now I'm going to back this off. Might as well move the handle over to this side. Make my life a little easier. And I need to tighten that nut. A crazy hot day in North Carolina, and I am sweating like a pig. Here we go. We are tight. Hopefully, we're not going to rip our sandpaper off right here. It can happen. I'm going to stand. Gosh, I'd love to stand on that side of the headstock, but I, I really can't to see what's going on. We're just going to, we're just going to kiss this very gently against that cutter. And unless I'm trying to remove a nick, I'm going to go, I'm touching it right now, and we are just kissing. There we go. Unless I'm trying to remove a nick, all I'm trying to do here is sharpen. So we're not removing much metal at all when we do this. 
And we got a nice clean face on that. Not that it was bad to begin with. And that's essentially how we can grind our cutters. Now, the thing about this is a number of our cutters are made as mates. We've got male and female cutters. Whoop, that's a glue joint, and that is a style and rail joint. Let me try again. Here we go. These two are mates for one another, and they cut a mating joint on two different pieces. The more we remove from this face, the more it changes the depth and size of these, and we have to be sure that we remove the exact same amount from both of these to keep them a match set. Not so simple. As I said, I'm going to refer you in a link below to Tom's video. I highly recommend watching that if you're going to be sharpening shaper cutters. But let's go on to the most requested mod, and that's going to happen over there. So in that earlier video, I mentioned how Shopsmith made it possible for you to sharpen while turning by mounting your sanding disc on the back of the headstock and an extension table on the end of your machine. And then their recommendation was that you would drill holes through this table in a few positions and then use bolts to bolt this to the table. Bolts from the bottom, still using the knobs on top. My problem with that always was you end up wearing out the sandpaper in just a few spots. And you also have a little bit of a limitation due to this little knob or nodule or whatever you want to call that, that uh, prevents you from sliding this any further. So uh, I actually cut that off on a bandsaw on the one that I used for years in the academy. And, and I just left this part on, and instead of drilling holes in the table, um, I made something like this. Now, what is this? This is just a piece of plywood that has a, a dado cut into it, roughly the same distance from the edge of the table as the main table is to the, uh, the miter slot. I say roughly. I, I, I got close. And what I can do is I can clamp this jig down onto that, and then I can slide this anywhere along my extension table and clamp it down. That allows me to sharpen my gouge or my skew anywhere along the disc very easily as I am turning. I just slide the headstock over, sharpen, go back to work. Um, again, my parting, excuse me, my, uh, my round nose scraper sharpens the same way. Now, on this side, the disc is moving up. I actually want to be over on this side of the disc where the disc is moving down. Some people actually like to sharpen up at the top, which I can do with this by adjusting the height of this extension table. Uh, it's over here <laughs> that you have a problem with this. That's why I ground that off, because I like sharpening on the downhill side of the disc. So what's going on here? Um, basically, all I've got is a, a flat edge. This is just made of scraps. The miters are not critical. A flat edge here and a carriage bolt and a T-nut, you could just drill and tap that hole. It wouldn't have to have a T-nut. Of course, I got a Bittner knob action going on here, a Bittner nut installed. So really, there are three points of contact. And if this board was warped in any way, all I'd have to do is add a couple screws here that would extend a bit beyond the face. And then I would make contact with my table in one, two, three points. I, I'm not so keen on the fact that as you tighten this knob down, it does kind of want to dig into the edge of the table. And uh, so what I did back in the academy days is I just put some tape along the edge here of this table. Uh, what I'm going to put here now is this fast cap uh, peel and stick edge banding. I love this stuff. And... I'll add a long piece later, but there you go. I got a nice surface there that isn't going to be damaged as I clamp this in place. And I can still adjust my jig just as if it were on the main table. So that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward, but I do look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots. And uh, we'll even sharpen a couple things on here on this side of the headstock in that follow-up video. Uh, but for now, it's just too dang hot. I'm going to go inside, so make it a great day.
forgot, um, after our last video, John Epps reached out to me and said that he has one of these jigs he would love to donate to somebody. So we're going to do a quick little drawing, leave a comment down below, and uh, mention the name J-O-N, John, in your comments. If you do that, you'll be entered to win his jig. Um, it's brand new, but not in the box, and he will send it out to whoever wins that. We'll uh, do the drawing in the follow-up video. Thanks, John, for uh, playing along, and good luck to the rest of you.